thought I'd take a go mix at explaining omix. So omix, basically it's just an ending you put on to describe some sort of study that's giving you a lot of quantitative data. So measurements that are trying to characterize like everything that's present in the sample. These techniques typically use these Basically, omics is just a suffix that you put on the end of things like gene or protein or transcription or meta metabolism, all these different terms. When you add omics, it basically just means that you're they're looking for lots of quantitative data, so measurements that are trying to characterize everything that's present in a sample and like well, everything in terms of the thing that you're measuring, the thing that you're looking for. The way that you're doing these measurements is typically using some sort of high throughput technique. So you're not sitting there and manually pipetting things over and over and over. You're using some sort of robotics. You're doing some sort of high throughput thing. And this allows you to get lots and lots of data without like too much work, still a lot of work, I'm sure. Um, but getting, you can get all this data, but then having all this data requires a lot of computational work to try to make sense of it. So people that do research in omics fields, they often um, have a lot of computational biology um, aspects of their work and when you look at their figures they can be kind of hard to interpret if you're an outsider because there's a lot of heat maps there's a lot of um, trying to show people what is in this data in when you have such massive amounts of data um, it can be hard to make sense of it all um, and so thankfully people do this sort of work are really good at really good at it um, so I am not in the omics field um, but someone had asked about this so I thought I would just give a little bit of an intro to some of these different terms that you might come across so as I said you could put this omics suffix on a bunch of different prefixes um, to basically like say, okay, we're going to use this, we're going to look at this, or we're going to use this method at a large scale um, to characterize what's going on. So often these have to do with measuring gene expression. Um, or so basically when you have, we've talked about various ways you can measure like quote unquote gene expression. So you start with the gene, which is the DNA version of like a protein recipe um, in a lot of cases. And there are ways that you can measure this. Um, like, so you can start with just, okay, what's the sequence of that gene? If you're doing that, you'd be something like genomics. So we'll talk more about these terms in a minute. Um, transcriptomics, you'd be dealing with transcription, which is where you make a messenger RNA copy of that gene. So this is telling you about one step in expressing the gene. Um, it's actually making these messenger RNAs. And so if you do like RNA sequencing, um, you can then measure how many messenger RNA copies there are for a specific gene. Um, and you can, when you do this for like all of them, then you're getting into the omics territory. We'll also talk about how there are different scales that you can do things at. So you can do things at like a single tissue, a single cell, um, various ways. Um, then you can measure the translation of these and you can measure the protein products. So when you're measuring the protein products, you're often using some sort of mass spectrometry based method. Um, and this is going to basically chop up the protein into pieces, measure the weights of those pieces and tell you how much of those products are there, what products were there, were there modifications on those products, um, various things like that. Um, so these omics techniques are going to use these really like high throughput methods. We're gonna be using the sequencing methods. We're gonna be using mass spec methods, these sort of things, as opposed to if we wanted to take a more dissect like a single target, a single gene, a single, a single protein. If we wanted to look at that sort of thing, we would often use more targeted approaches and we can get a lot final, finer detail into what's going on um, with these more in-depth experiments on those specific targets. But using these omics techniques can sometimes give you insight into which proteins or which genes and that sort of thing you want to look at, as well as it can give you information if you're trying to compare between different things, um, various reasons why these omics can come in handy. So let's talk about some of the terms that you might come across. Um, so first off, genomics. So um, genome is just like, all of your whole compilation of DNA, so all of your chromosomes and everything. And you can think about um, genomics as 
that it's looking at that DNA and it can look at it in various levels. And you, so you might see different like subterms. You can be looking at the sequences, you can be looking at the function, the organization, various things like that. When it comes to the sequencing, it's often done um, these days by some sort of um, shotgun method with like an Illumina or PacBio or Nanopore, um, more on sequencing methods and other things. Um, but basically you have these methods where you can now sequence a lot of DNA um, for a lot cheaper and easier than you could in the past. And so you can generate lots and lots of data. Um, what's really, so one of the cool things is like metagenomics. So you can actually just take like an environmental sample and look and see, okay, what critters are there? What organisms are there? What bacteria are there? Um, it's lots of cool uses for that. Um, you could also look at more in more depth at the DNA, at changes to the DNA epigenomics. Um, so this is looking at like methylation, acetylation, et cetera, these like epigenetic marks. So things that are above the sequence itself that aren't just in the sequence, but are also like modifications that are happening on this DNA and on, um, and on the, um, the histones that it's bound up on. Um, you can also, okay, so now transcriptomics, and so now we're talking about transcription, we're talking about making messenger RNA copies from the genes. Um, so here, this is often done with like RNA sequencing to measure messenger RNA levels for various um, things. So again, if you wanted to just look at a single thing, you could do like qPCR or something like that, but to get at all of the measure, messenger RNAs in, in the cells um, that you're studying, you can use um, transcriptomics. So you would use a more high throughput method like RNA-seq that's going to be able to tell you about all of the different RNAs. Um, proteomics, now we're looking at the proteins. Um, so typically with mass spectrometry, um, which basically, it, as I mentioned, it kind of like chops the things up into pieces and then it measures their like mass to charge ratio um, and then compares that to a database which has the known mass to charge ratios of all the, like, the, the specific like products that there could be in there. So if you chop up the protein with these, it'll have these various peptides, so these various part proteins, um, and then you can know how massive those would be and then compare it. If there are modifications on the proteins, this will also alter their um, mass and their charge. And so you can then detect those modifications. And so there are different forms of proteomics that look at various types of modifications, such as phosphoproteomics, which is going to look at phosphorylation. Uh, mass spec can also be used to look at things other than proteins. So metabolomics is looking at metabolites. So basically measuring small biomolecule, biochemical molecules. Um, so these molecules can be like precursors or building blocks or reactions. So we can be talking sugars, lipids, amino acids, et cetera, um, including modified forms. Because again, with the mass spec, you can detect these modifications as long as you know that they could be possible uh, because you have to be comparing it to known um, known data, um, a data, data bank. Um, then you can also be like molecules that are formed as intermediates or breakdown products from biochemical processes. So all of those um, metabolic pathways we talk about. So metabolism is just like the making and breaking of molecules. And so when you have a lot of different intermediates in those processes, you can then um, measure those intermediates and this can tell you, okay, is there a holdup somewhere in the process? Is there some sort of problem? Um, metabolics, uh, metabolomics can help uh, tell you about that sort of thing. You can also be seeing like um, what's, yeah, what's, what's there. Um, and then you can also do like, so signaling molecules as well. So things like hormones. So various um, types of molecules that you could detect. You can also do a lot of these different techniques at different levels. Um, so basically the, you, can do it with a huge sample, such as like a meta sample, like an environmental sample. Um, but you're gonna get lower individual coverage of each thing and you can't tell, okay, well, is this, we know that there's this gene, we know that there's just gene, but we don't even know if those same from the same organism. Um, if you want to say, okay, well, this is coming from this cell type, um, you can do different cells. Um, and if you wanna do like, okay, well, this is coming from this individual cell as opposed to that individual cell. So within a tissue or within even like with the cell culture or whatever, like not the cells are going to be different from one another. So you can use like single cell techniques. Um, these are often abbreviated with SC. Um, and this will be telling you about what's happening in an individual cell. Um, 
there are also like spatial things where you can use typically use fluorescence um, to look at where things are happening within a tissue or within even a cell itself. Um, so often done using some sort of fluorescent um, sequencing, um, like whether it's fluorescent sequencing process um, like in place. Um, so actually like inside of a cell or that sort of thing. And you can um, see where in a cell or where in a tissue things are being transcribed, et cetera. Um, and so hope that helps. Yeah, again, I'm not an omics person. Um, I appreciate the work that they do, um, but it's just not my field. And so I'm not gonna try to go too far into it, but I just wanted to give you a little um, brief look at some of these terms that you might come across and hope it helped.